Here we're going to look at question 19 from section 2 of the Enger specimen paper. So in this question we're told that we have a waterfall uh, where 40 kg per second of water is going over the waterfall and hitting the rocks below. So the water is falling a height of 45 metres before hitting these rocks um, where it hits them across an area of 2 metres squared. We're also told that the water just above the bottom of the waterfall is at an average depth of 0.05 metres and the, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per metre cubed. So what the question actually asks us is what is the pressure P on the rocks at the bottom of the waterfall? So if you'd like to have a go at the, uh, this question yourself then please pause the video now. Um, otherwise let's have a go at it. So to answer this question let's begin by thinking about pressure and what pressure actually is. Our equation for pressure is that it's equal to the force on an area um, divided by the magnitude of the area. So the force on the rock at the bottom of the waterfall is equal to the force of everything above it uh, divided by this area of 2 metres squared. But what actually is the force um, that's coming from the water, or what, what is actually is the force on this area, sorry? Well, there's actually going to be two things adding to this force. There is, first of all, going to be the force of the water actually coming down from the waterfall and hitting it, but we also have this water on top, which is going to provide a weight. So we're actually going to have to find both of these, and then together they should contribute to uh, help us find this total force, and therefore the pressure. Um, so to find these, let's begin by thinking about the force of the water actually going over the waterfall. Um, so how could we possibly find this? Well, perhaps you might straight away think of Newton's second law, but actually you'll quickly see that that's not going to work, since we don't really have a reliable mass or um, an acceleration. What we could do, though, is think um, of Newton's second law in this way, that the, um, the force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So what we could do is find, um, in a period of time, delta t, the change in momentum, delta p, of the water hitting the rock. So let's pick a nice easy time of one second, because in one second we're told that 40 kilograms of water hits the rock. So what we want to do next is then think about the change of momentum um, of the water in this time. And using our equation for momentum, it's just going to be equal to the mass of this water in one second, 40 kilograms, multiplied by the change in velocity. So we know that the change in velocity is all going to come from the speed of the water speeding up um, as it falls over the waterfall. Since initially the water is just travelling along the top of this cliff, um, not moving down at all. So let's try and use that fact to work out what this delta v, the velocity of the rock at the bottom of the waterfall, is going to be. Now, one easy way of doing this is possibly by conservation of energy. So, initially, the rock, uh, the water, sorry, has a gravitational potential energy, and at the bottom it has no gravitational potential energy, but kinetic energy instead. So what we can do is equate these two things together and rearrange for delta v, where we're going to see that the mass is going to cancel, and we can substitute in our value of g of 10 and our height of 45 meters to get delta v being the square root of 900 or 30 meters per second. So we know that the water, um, as it goes over this waterfall, is going to reach a speed of 30 meters per second and therefore delta v is just going to be 30 meters per second. That since it's going to come to being stationary at the bottom when it hits the, um, the rock. Now with this we can go ahead and calculate delta p which is just going to be our 40 kilograms multiplied by our 30 meters per second, delta V, uh, to get a total change of momentum of 1200 kilograms per meter second, or meters per second, sorry. Um, and then dividing this by a time period of one second, we get that the force is just going to be equal um, to 1200 newtons. So the force due to the water is just going to be 1200 newtons, and um, once we find our weight of the water, we can calculate our pressure. So going ahead and looking at our weight, uh, the weight of water on top of um, this area is just going to be equal to the mass of the water on top of the area multiplied by the gravitational field strength, g. So to find our weight, we need to find the mass of water on top of this area. Um, but how could we find that? Well, we've actually been given this depth here, which we've not had to use yet, which might give you a bit of a clue. Um, so we're told that the area of this bit of rock is 2 metres squared, and we're told we have a depth of 0 0.05 metres. So in total we know that the volume above our area is going to be 
um, or can be found using these two together. So um, our mass is going to be our volume multiplied by the density we were told in the question as well. Um, so calculating our, de um, our volume sorry, and multiplying it by our density of 1000 kilograms per meter cubed, then we can find that the mass of water just sitting on top of the rock is 100 kilograms. So multiplying this by g of our uh, value of just 10, then we find that the weight is 1000 newtons. So together we have this weight of 1000 newtons and the force due to the water falling off the waterfall um, producing a force of 12,000 or 1200 newtons. Sorry. Now plugging these two forces in, uh, we find that the total force, or the, the pressure, sorry, is going to be this total force um, of, of 2,200 newtons, sorry, divided by 2, um, giving us a final value of 1,100 pascals. Um, so this final answer is just going to correspond with answer E given in the question.